Hey everyone, it's Joe from greenlightsound.com and today we've got a look at a new plugin from Denise Audio who recently has been putting out some really fantastic plugins and this one is a saturation distortion plugin in a multiband variety sort of influenced by Pultec designs of years past and this is called God Mode. And the first thing I want to do is talk about this inspiration for God Mode, the Pultec EQ, the EQP1A actually. So if we take a look at the actual Pultec here, Pultec is not a distortion plugin. Pultec is an EQ that was uh, developed in the 1950s and used since then in broadcast and studio applications. And the Pultec EQ has a really unique feature. So I want to take a look at this sort of inverted triangle controls right here. We've got a low frequency selector, a boost, and an attenuation or cut. And the thing is that this CPS setting, the cycles per second, or how many hertz you're boosting, is the same for the boost and cut. So what we can do is boost a frequency, in this case it's 100 hertz, and number one, you can see how broad of a boost this is on a Pultec. And then we take that attenuation and we do the same frequency, but it creates a unique curve out of it with sort of a resonant peak and dip that's characteristic of the Pultex. So the idea is you push into it and then you pull it back. And of course you're gonna get some saturation through the Pultec just because of the tubes, in this case model tubes and the real one, actual tubes, but it's not a distortion plugin per se. If we go back to Denise Audio's plugin, we have the same exact type of effect, but it's done with much more control and with some different types of saturation. Now I'm not gonna go over every single control in detail. If you check out Denise.io, there's a really great video on there showing you all of these different controls and how they work in depth. What I'm really gonna do is use it in action. But just to quickly go over how this thing works, You've got your frequency bands up here, which we can click on and select. And that's whatever frequency we want and whatever curve we want. We can also change the Q value, of course. Whatever curve we want in the frequency spectrum for our distortion and saturation to be applied to. We've got three different types of saturation, tape, warp, and buzz, and they're all in order of intensity. Tape's more subtle, warp's kind of in the middle, and buzz is more extreme. We've got pre and post high and low pass filters, one for the pre-signal before distortion, one for the post-signal after the processing. A standard mix control, the pull setting, which is unique, which allows you to really decide how much of that saturation you want. So you boost it up and then pull it back. And that's where that pull tech inspiration really takes effect. We've got dry and wet panning, individual pan of the dry and wet signal. Some makeup gain, of course side chain features. We've got a live mode that uh, takes away the linear phase filters and gives it zero latency. Um, so just lots of cool features here. Most of the demos I've seen of this plugin use it on more electronic oriented music. In this case, I want to use it on some acoustic sources and see how it sounds there because saturation and multiband distortion can be used on acoustic sources just as successfully as it can on electronic. So the first thing we're going to do is start with a kick drum. Here is the kick by itself without anything going on. Pretty standard kick drum. So my goal in this one is going to be to saturate the low mids of this to get it to kind of be a little bit more beefy down there and maybe saturate the upper areas of the frequency spectrum to get more of that kind of cutting beater sound out of it. So let's experiment with what we can get here. Here's the pre and post processing. And if it's too much, we can always pull back the mix, drive it harder. Just a nice way to get that low band saturation and some upper frequency saturation as well. Really nice. Let's try it on a snare drum next. And here's the snare drum sound without any processing applied. 
get the idea, and let's try to beef this thing up. It's also really nice to have the spectrum analyzer included here. You can see kind of where the resonance is. And some more sizzle. Widen that cue a bit. Bring it down. Bring down the makeup gain a bit. And here's our pre-processing again, dry signal. And with processing. We could always bring that mix back up. We want more extreme processing. Without. With. Now that can really help a snare drum cut through a mix. So that's some really great sounding processing. And it can go from subtle to extreme. If we wanted to, we could bring the tape down and drive up this warp and buzz, which are more extreme. Here it is without again. I mean, it takes that kind of small, dry sound and makes it huge sounding, which is really cool. The next element we're gonna take a look on is a typically distorted one that is bass guitar. And this time I'm gonna think about it in a power law distortion sense. So we're gonna start with the mix fully up and then I'm gonna add whatever saturation I want and pull that mix back a bit, sort of like a parallel saturation distortion. try to level match a little bit better. If we can dial in as much or as little as we want, if we want to go full blast, that's a great saturated sound if we want to mix it in parallel. That's also really nice. It sounds fantastic on bass. All right, how about some guitars? Let's try it on guitar. Here's the dry guitar signal unprocessed. And let's see what we can do with some nice tape saturation on guitar. Actually, I'm gonna try different. Let's try warp. Here it is without. And with. You can really thicken things up too, which is really nice. And the final element we're gonna hear it on is vocals. I wanna do some really subtle tape saturation on the vocals. So here's the dry vocal signal. I can feel you slipping through my hand. And let's process it. I can feel you slipping through my hands. If only I had listened to been a better man. I mean, just those two little EQ moves with that saturation makes it way better sounding. I can feel you slipping through my hands. 
it's almost like you're emulating some proximity effect, like the singer's getting a little bit closer to the microphone and boosting that low end, which is really, really nice. And it's done subtly with this tape saturation. I can feel you slipping. And finally, I want to check it out with some random. I'm going to hit this random button and see what we come up with on the vocal. I can feel you slipping through my hand. I can feel you slipping. 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 That one's great. A little smiley face EQ and saturation going on. So if you need some inspiration, you can always hit that random button and tweak from there. Also, if you hit control and the random button, you'll go back to your default settings too, so you don't get too out of control. So I really do think that of all the plugins I've checked out from Denise Audio so far, this one is my favorite. God Mode sounds fantastic. It's a multiband distortion saturation plugin, but it handles that multiband aspect in such a different way than the other ones I've worked with that it's really cool and very unique. And like I said in the beginning, I've heard this used on a lot of electronic sources and it sounds fantastic on those. But here being applied to acoustic sources sounds fantastic as well. It's almost like you can use it as subtle as some subtle EQ or full out crazy mangled saturation distortion if you want to. So it's super versatile in that sense. If you have any questions or comments, don't forget to let me know in the comment section down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so so we can keep you in the loop as to what's coming up next. And I'll see you in the next one.